I'm on my way to interview an owner of an interesting car. I'm just on my way to interview Matt about his Triumph TR7 V8 rally car. He lives about two hours down the road, so I'll see you then. No, I'm not performing any new turns. I'm here talking with Matt about this wonderful TR7 V8. Now, how long have you had this car? So uh, we purchased the car, I think it was 2004, and um, we started building it the following year, 2005. So that's what like now, 15, 16 years. And uh, just progressively um, so improved the car over that period of time. Right. So uh, the build process, was that like a, a bare body shell and, and the whole hog? No, not really, actually. What, what we did was um, we bought the car initially just as a road car and uh, the intention really was to just run it in some club events, not really to do too much with it, um, just have a bit of fun, maybe some, some rally sprints and so forth. And then as usual, you know, we started doing this and doing that and as we were driving it, realised that it needed this and needed that and, and it uh, evolved into what it is today, which is a fairly heavily modified vehicle to meet the current classic rules. Um, and so we really did it quite progressively over a number of years. So it's what, a Rover V8 motor? Yeah, it's Rover V8, it's 3.9, uh, which is as big as we can go if we want to stay in the classic uh, category. Right. Uh, and um, it had the, the 3.9 already in it, so all we did was just rebuild it. Um, <coughs> rebuilt to a spec that is quite um, reliable. It's not super big horsepower, but it's it's a lot of torque. Obviously, it's a V8, and we drive it drive it that way, drive it on the torque. And the rest of the car is really set up around that, largely. So that's the fuel injection. No, we just we run a jug on it, so uh, just a holly. Right. And, and it's um, it's really given no trouble. It works really well. It delivers a good spread of power and its uh, throttle response is amazing. Really? It's really good, yeah. yeah. So we're very happy with it. Right, so yeah. then we go to the gearbox, is that a... So the gearbox, uh, originally we had the LT177, which is the original uh, Triumph 5-speed box yep. in it. Yeah. And um, they're not particularly reliable, particularly once you start pushing them a bit hard. Yeah. That didn't yep. last very long, so... Um, we had the opportunity to go to a dog box um, that came out of an Escort um, and we've grafted that into it and uh, that works really well. It's very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, the, the ratios are not ideal, um, they're Escort ratios, um, but what we've done with the torque of the engine, we've put a 3.9 diff in it. And that spreads the ratios a bit and we're able to drive it. It's quite, it's quite drivable right. the way it is. So. so that's the Rover diff that they had in them? Uh, no, it's a Commodore diff. Commodore. Yeah, so we run a Commodore diff, um, uh, complete Commodore rear end, uh, which includes the brakes, Group A Commodore brakes. Yep, yep. And uh, we went to 15-inch wheels to accommodate that as well. Right. Which is a bit of a compromise as well, but um, it all seems to work quite well. And how'd you go for guard clearance? Like uh, just. Just. <laughs> uh, guard clearance is actually the rear. If we put 205 tyres on it, they tend to scrape a bit on big bumps. Right. Uh, and on the front, we're limited to 195. 
So at the moment, what I'm actually running at the moment is Pirelli's, which are a 185, so even smaller tyre. Yeah. Uh, but being a Pirelli, the 185 is actually not far off a 195 equivalent yeah. of other yeah. tyres, so they actually work quite well. Yeah. Now, when they were rallying these back in the in the 70s, they had a reputation of being very difficult to drive on a loose yeah. surface. Yeah. How do you find that? <laughs> yeah. They are very, uh, very difficult actually. Um, I've driven, I've been rallying for 40 years. I've driven lots and lots of different cars over yep. that period of time. That's not to say this car is not enjoyable to drive. It, it is, but you've just really got to have your wits about you because um, short wheelbase, lots of power. Um, it, it can, on fast stuff, it's quite twitchy. Yeah. And um, even on a straight road, <clears throat> the car will tend to move around a bit. Yeah. So um, we've done some things to the to the vehicle to try and improve that uh, over a period of time, but this limited to what you can do. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's great going uphill. Fantastic. Sits on the back wheels and yeah. off you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, going downhill is a bit of a different story. Right. And if you're trying to drive it in the wet, what what I notice is there's a huge difference in the in the way the car handles with the amount of grip that's available. So um, as the grip decreases, the work inside the car increases significantly. Um, they were renowned as a very good tarmac car. And I think for that reason, that where the grip was offered, they were quite good. But on gravel, they were always, um, even if you have a look at the results back in the, in the day, um, I think the best they achieved on gravel was, you know, maybe a podium finish or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah their bitumen results were... And their bitumen they, results yeah. were... were uh, they won quite a few events yeah. in a bitumen setup. Mm. I think they did something with the trailing arms, did you? Have you... Yeah, so <clears throat> the trailing arms, in the standard trailing arms in them, um, they have this really odd um, angled opposed top trailing arm yeah which tends to bind the rear end up as it articulates yeah so uh, what we've done is we've done similar to an escort put a full five link yeah um, yeah uh, completely rebuilt the the rear of the vehicle to accommodate that yeah and so the geometry is not probably not quite as good as an escort but it's not far off um, the limitation is the length that we have to deal with because being such a short vehicle, yeah, and no room behind the seat, the arms can only be so long. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we're limited by that, um, but it still works quite well. The, the we've set it up so that we've got adjustable squat in it as well. So um, depending on the surface, we can change that, right. and it, it actually squats. It works quite well. Yeah. And the the front suspension of you, what have you done there? So, uh, with the front suspension, it's got uh, TR7 struts in it with a SD1, Rover SD1 uh, stub axle, <coughs> which has allowed us to use Commodore hubs right. and therefore full Commodore Group A brakes as well. Yeah. Um, and then what we've done is we've gone for um, MCS Murray Coot suspension, uh, which we've got on all our cars, <coughs> and that that works really well. Right. Um, <clears throat> prior to doing that, we did have Bilsteins in it, and um, the difference is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so that modern valving in, yeah. in the suspension makes a big yeah. difference. Yeah. It does. Yeah. About the caster and camber, how have you done that? So we've got uh, camber out of the uh, strut tops. We've got about two degrees camber on. So you've got an adjustable negative camber yep. top. Yep. And um, the caster we've just shimmed up as best we can to get as much as much out of it, right. given the limitation of the bodywork yeah. that we're working with. So, uh, but we've got pretty good, pretty good settings in that regard. Right, uh, works yeah. quite well. Yeah. And now uh, let's go back in time a little bit and, and say, so what was your, what drove you to go? I like rally. I want to get into that sport. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Um, so it's 40 years, actually, pretty much this year uh, that I've been rallying. Uh, st 
started in motorsport through family. My mum was involved and um, got involved in various aspects. Uh, initially, I was racing uh, circuit stuff, and then um, I was actually doing a bit of rallying at the same time, and uh, just really enjoyed it. Um, and just I just enjoy the the whole aspect of um, being able to go to an event. It's a long event. Um, it's a team, really much a team sport. Yeah. And um, like doing skids as well. So you put it all together, and and you've got rallying. So. It's it's more of an adventure than than it is. Than yeah, yeah, it is. I guess you you're on a bit of an adventure in a sense that you. You're doing an event. You're starting in a place and finishing in a place. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of aspects to it, so it's quite a challenge. And I enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. So, what what was that first rally car? Uh, the first rally car was a Mitsubishi Colt. Oh yes. Yep. And it was um, the early model Colt, so it was an 1100 SS body. Yep. But with all Lancer running gear, so Lancer motor and gearbox. Is that the Galant uh, shape? Yeah, so Colt? the uh, no, so the Colt was the very early Colt. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the eleven hundred SS yeah. body, um, which is the little like two door fastback. Yeah, yeah. Again, short wheelbase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was quite an interesting car to drive because it was actually quite difficult in some sense to drive as well. It was quite tall for its wheelbase. Yeah. Um, so I rallied that for a few years and uh, rode it off, rebuilt it, and uh, sold it, and then bought other cars as well. So, 40 years ago, was that pre-special <laughs> stage? Were you still into map reading at that point, or has it gone into... <clears throat> so at that point, we were doing events that were on quarter-minute timing. Yep. I think it was quarter-minute timing. and Forward-minute, wasn't it? The... Some were forward minute yep. and others were quarter minute. Yeah, I think depending yep. on the, the level of the event that you did. Yep. Yep. <coughs> um, and in that car, I only, I only remember doing quarter minute timing, I think. <coughs> I was co-driving for some people at the same time and I think we did some forward minute timing in some of those events as well. Yeah. This is, we're talking uh, 70, 76 through to... Yeah, yeah. Early eighties for that yep. sort of those sort of events. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, very different to today. Yeah, well, the roads weren't closed. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's I true. Remember that? <laughs> yes, that's true. I do remember doing some events where we came across some people in stages, farmers, and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which was quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, they would have been all at night at that point too, wouldn't they? Mostly at night. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So as, as time progressed, of course, into the next, how many rally cars have we had, you know? Well, I guess, I'm not sure I haven't counted them up, but um, I went through a period where we had uh, um, had a Galant, uh, had a Lancer, LA Lancer, uh, which I shared with another guy. Um, when I was in Queensland, I was rallying in Queensland, I had a Datsun 1200U. <laughs> Well, that was another short wheelbase. This, this is a thing here, isn't <laughs> it? The attraction yeah. of short wheelbase cars. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, what else did I have? Um, yeah, um, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but various cars over yeah. the years. Um, a P76 at some point? Oh, yes, we had the P76, which was... <laughs> well, that was a long wheelbase car. So yeah, it was a very long wheelbase car and very, very different. Yeah. Um, that's a bit of a story in itself, but... Uh, I shared that car with three other people and um, it was bought initially to do a, a particular rally that was mooted at the time. Right. Um, this was about mid-80s or maybe early 80s and uh, there was a rally. Uh, they were trying to put together an event which was a Sydney to Melbourne event and three of us decided that we were going to build this car to run this event. The event never happened. And so from there we we built it and ran it and ran it in I don't know probably six or eight events over a period of a few years. Yeah. Um, between us, had a lot of fun and uh, eventually sold the car. Um, the car was sold to Bruce Garland, and 
Bruce did some uh, did some events in it as well. Um, had a bit of a fun, bit of fun in it, and uh, <laughs> I don't know where it ended up. But um, well, certainly they're a big car and would have been a challenge. Um, it to was, not hit anything. It, it, well, yeah, trying not to hit anything was a challenge. How many rear guards did you go through? <laughs> well, I don't know about rear guards, but. Um, Trevor Schumack was one of the guys that was involved in it and he had a business at the time which was building um, fun rides. So um, he had a factory with um, a lot of steel in it and he decided that it would be a good idea to put a piece of RSJ in the front of it. <laughs> and we did, I remember doing Bega one year, he was driving and uh, we left the road uh, head on, went straight into the forest. I think we knocked down probably about a dozen saplings, cleared the forest, selected reverse gear, and just continued in the event. It didn't even damage the front at yeah. all. It was just uh, yeah, one of those cars. Um, had a roll cage built, I think in the time it was built uh, with some pipe that he had laying around, which was um, a water pipe. You can get away with it in those days, you can't now, but um, and uh, he even welded a uh, a tap <laughs> just for the scrutiny. <laughs> but uh, those were different days, yeah. Like rallying was a different thing back then, it was um, very different, it was more what you built from what you had, exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, more lot of diversity as well in people just rally whatever they could get their hands on. Yep. Um, mm. More than, uh, and then of course the Datsun 1600 come along and everyone rallied then. Yeah, well that's another one that I had too, Datsun 1600. Um, and I actually found that car really difficult to drive, I don't know why, but <laughs> I only had it a short time. Um, again, it was a car I shared with someone else, but. Uh, I never really, I could never get my head around them. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, the events you're doing these days, what, what's the future? Are you, are you going to the Alpine Rally this year? Yeah, so we plan to do uh, the Alpine again. So this will be, I think, our eighth Alpine. Um, then it'll be uh, the sixth Alpine in this car. Um, so we'll start preparing the car for that shortly. And That'll be probably our only event this year in this car. Right. Um, anyway, we'll we'll run the Evo in um, in a couple of events um, during the year, but um, for this car, that's probably it. I'd say for this year. Yeah. So, uh, have you ever been attracted to the long distance stuff, like the Outback Trials on this year? Yes, I have. Um, I've never got around to it. For various reasons, um, money and time. Uh, there's a lot. Obviously, the Outback Trial has has interested me, um, but it's a week long event, yeah. and I've I've not really I've not really wanted to do it in this particular car because a week in this car is a long time, yeah, <laughs> and. Um, it's a very small cabin and it gets hot and the outback's hot and yeah. it's not really suited to it. So it's been a lack of car and also time to do, but I still have an interest in doing those sort yeah. of events. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I did the Southern Cross rally a few years ago that went to Coffs Harbour. It was a very relaxed sort of thing. And yeah, a, a week in a, any sort of rally car really mm. um, is a challenge. Um, the endlessly yeah. getting in and out over the roll cage and over the seat yep. um, plays havoc with your knees and, and other components. Yep, and getting in and out of this car is definitely a challenge. Yeah. Um, so um, it's really just not suited to that that yeah. sort of an event. Yeah. 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 Now um, it's blue now, but I seem to see pictures of it in a different colour at some point. Yep, um, it had been red um, for a long time which was just the original um, Triumph Red that had it, the car had been repainted in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we decided to put some white on that and we ran it that way for a few years. Um, about two years ago, 
uh, we rolled the car quite heavily and uh, it needed it needed to be painted and uh, decided it was time for a change. Um, so, so was the old colour scheme a, a homage to the Colin Bond car? Yeah, we we chose that. Um, it was easy to paint it and it was, uh, although not exactly the same red as his car, it was the same design. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, we ran it that way for a few years. Um, and then decided to go with the blue, um, which is a colour that I like. And well, it's, it's in the a homage to the the white, red, white, and blue four cylinder colour scheme. It, a little bit. It's not the same design, yeah. but um, yeah. we've we've picked some colours. Yeah, that the bonnet. Are, yeah, that are similar. Yeah, similar. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to the 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 colour design is similar to the the original works cars yeah. the way they were built. And uh, we've tried to when we're building the car. Um, We've tried to stay as much to that as possible. Um, everything with these cars you have to make. You can't buy anything off the shelf. Yeah. Um, so building the cage, we've built it as close as possible to the original work spec that we, yeah. that we could, um, which includes some some braces that come through uh, on an angle in the engine bay, which uh, was the way that the John Buffum car in, in the States was built right. uh, to give it some extra strength. Uh, a fairly good solid shell in the first place. They are. The chassis rails are an enormous the, thing. They are very, very strong. Yeah. Um, but one thing we found is that the um, these were built at the time that Leyland was going through all of oh, yeah. its yeah. difficulties with... Um, economically and with the strikes that were going on yeah. um, at the time I understand they sourced a lot of the metal um, out of Russia right. to save some dollars yeah. and uh, we we found out just how difficult that is to weld when we were starting to do the, all the work on it yeah. um, it's, uh, the metal in it is strong but it's I'm not sure how pure it is. Um, it's quite yeah. difficult to weld. I know they're, they're aluminium from, from this era. Their heads on the standard TR7 and what have you are, yeah. is not good stuff at all. No, no. The uh, trailing arms on 2500 Triumphs, they're yeah. shocking stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, strength wise, it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, super strong. Right, so you haven't had any like fatigue cracking and. and no, not a great deal. Um, a little bit around the bulkhead, um, which we fixed when we did the uh, the rear uh, five link in it, and um, the transmission tunnel. Uh, we had a little bit around there as well, uh, but that's all been seam welded now, fully seam welded. But apart from that, not a lot. The um, how do you go for the getting in and out of these things? Even a standard TR7 is a challenge to get in and out. It is really difficult. Yeah. I mean, even for me, and I'm not, um, you know, I'm reasonably wiry, um, yeah. but uh, it's getting harder <laughs> as I get older. Well, it's the getting in process is not too bad. <laughs> it's the getting back out process. Actually, it is cards both, yeah. um, because uh, getting in it with a helmet on, um, with the roof line the way it is, is yeah. quite difficult. I've actually got to really bend quite a bit my neck to get clear of the roll cage to yeah. get in over the over the crossbar. Yeah. yeah. And the seats, if you have to try and get them as close to the floor as possible because well, good with the, the seats, it's yeah, it's interesting with the seats, what they did in the in some of the works cars was they actually cut a hole in the floor and lowered the seat. Yeah. Um, which is an option and we looked at doing that. Yeah. But the problem with that is that the lower you go the less vision you've got. Yeah, yeah. And in these, one of the one of the issues that they that they have is vision. Yeah. So um, you have a very um, low line of vision, uh, particularly coming over crests. You can't, you don't get much yeah. much vision. And so the lower you go, the worse that is. So what yeah. we decided to do was to stick with the original floor, right, and put up with the fact that we have less head headroom. So, in fact, what I've got is a lot of padding on the roll cage um, yeah. to protect 
the helmet from hitting the roll cage. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're quite close together. I seem to remember reading something about headlights being up for that, for one of those reasons. That's true, it. because um, it's, it's very true, and that's why the headlights are up, because it, it's a point at which you can focus yeah. and get some vision. Yeah. It's yeah. even to the extent where, to get better vision, I take the uh, the right hand wiper rub, uh, wipe, wiper oh, yeah. blade off. Yeah. Uh, which gives us just that extra inch. Yeah. And it's amazing the difference that makes in visualising crests. It right. just gives you the extra yeah. bit that you need. Um, the first thing I notice if I get in a car um, like an Escort or even the Corolla or the Evo. Is the vision straight away? I can see. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's it's quite a bit. It's quite a lot. So. But the steering on this, you got power steering or? No, the steering is at the moment is um, a manual, but uh, we're in the process of putting electric steering on it. Yeah. Um, we put up with it being manual for years, but we're going into a three and a half day event, and uh, yeah, I'm not getting any stronger, so. Um, I, I, I drove a TR7 as my road car for 20 odd years, and then it got put in storage for a while, while and I started driving a Toyota, and I drove the TR7 from storage to my house to start working on it, and I thought to myself, how on earth did I ever drive this for 20 years? Yeah. Its steering is heavy. It is, it is. And this is very heavy. Yeah. Um, in competition, it's not too bad. Yeah. But it is still heavy. Yeah. And. Uh, these days it's a bit hard on my back, so electric steering is going yeah. in it before the Alpine. All right, well, thank you very much for that little chat about this wonderful TR7 V8. Thank you. I'm Quack McMullard. Bye for now.